Hi, and welcome to this video on Simio Response Sensitivity Analysis. In this video, we're going to talk about what we mean by response sensitivity analysis and how we can perform this type of analysis using the Simio simulation software package. We will also talk about how we can interpret the results of the sensitivity analysis in Simio and some of the precautions that we need to consider when using this type of analysis. In Simio, there are multiple ways of specifying input data. The first and perhaps the most common way of doing this is by putting an expression directly in the object instance properties. So for instance, in the single server model that I have here, I have random arrivals and my inter-arrival times are exponentially distributed with a mean of 0.25 minutes. Similarly, for my server, I have random.triangular 0.1, 0.2, minutes for processing times. There are other ways of specifying input data in Simio. For instance, we can use referenced properties. That's when you define the expression in the reference property, and then you go back to the object instance and refer to that reference property. Another way of specifying input data is by using tables. So for example, you may have an arrival table that specifies exactly what time entities are created in your model. This is used, for example, when you want to replicate a particular situation that happened in the real system. There are also sequence tables that can be used to not only specify the sequence that parts go through, but also the processing times at each step. You may also use a rate table, especially when you have a non-stationary arrival process. We can also use timers and events. So we can specify an expression in a timer element, and then whenever this timer goes off, an event is triggered and something happens in your model. We may also use events uh, that occur in the model. For example, consider a conwip queuing model where you want to maintain a constant amount of work in progress. So every time a part leaves the system, you want to create a new part. So the event of interest here is when an entity leaves the system. And whenever that event happens, you trigger an arrival into your system. So we're not going to go into the details of these items here. What I'm going to do is just go to Simio and show you where some of these can be specified. So I'm going to drag a source object instance here. And if you go to its properties, you will see that for the arrival mode, currently I have inter-arrival time. And I have the expression directly in my source object properties. Now, if I open up this drop-down list, you'll see that I also have the option to, to use a time-varying arrival table. That's for modeling non-stationary arrival processes. Or I can have unevent arrivals using an event. And this event may be created by a timer or whenever an event happens in the model. Or I can use an arrival table to specify the exact arrival times. While these methods are discussed in detail in other video modules, in this video, we're going to talk about an alternative way of specifying input data using Simio input parameters. We can specify input parameters under the data tab. So in this particular example, I have defined input parameters for my model. So I have my model selected, I go to the data tab, and click on input parameters. And as you can see, we have three different types of input parameters, distribution, table value, and expression. Let's talk about why we use input parameters in the first place. So there are three main reasons. First of all, if we would like to use the observed real world data directly in the simulation model. In other words, if we want to sample from the actual data that we have collected, in that case, we need to use input parameters. Also, 
using input parameters allows us to perform two kinds of analysis. The response sensitivity analysis gives us an estimate of how sensitive the outputs of our simulation model are with respect to the different input parameters. On the other hand, the sample size error analysis helps us evaluate the input uncertainty and allocate our data collection resources more wisely to different inputs in our model. Specifying input parameters and considerations for using observed real-world data directly in, in, in simulation models are covered in a related video um, in this video module. In this video, we're going to primarily focus on what we mean by response sensitivity analysis and how we can perform and analyze the results um, of this type of analysis in Simio. And sample size error analysis is covered in another video in this series. So if you're not familiar with Simio input parameters and or you do not know how to implement input parameters in your simulation model, please pause this video watch the related video on specifying input parameters and then come back and continue this video so that you will have a much better idea about what we're doing here. So we're going to use a simple model of an airport security checkpoint to show how we can perform sensitivity analysis in Simio. In this model, passengers first visit the dock check station where security officers check their boarding pass and identification document and then they visit either of the two scanning stations. The AIT station or Advanced Imaging Technology station is for regular passengers, while the other scanning station is what we call pre-check here in the US. And this is for passengers who have already gone through some background checks. And, and the difference between the two is, is that the pre-check passengers will get to keep their shoes and belts on. There may be some other differences as well, but the net effect is that the pre-check station usually has a shorter line and faster processing time. Now, those regular passengers that go through the AIT either pass and leave the system, or if they fail, not only they need to go through the scanner, uh, scanner again, but they will also need to go through the pat-down station. And this is where an officer performs a body search uh, on these passengers. Now, in this model, all of the routings are uh, implemented using the selection weight property of, of the links. So for instance, 80% of my passengers are regular passengers and 20% are pre-check passengers. Similarly, for the outcome of the AIT station, if, if, if a passenger fails the AIT, that means they, 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 are, they are screened twice, they go through the pat-down station if a passenger is only uh, screened once, they, f they fail with a probability of 10% or they pass with a probability of 90%. Now, I'm using a combination of conditional and probabilistic routing on these three links. And if you want to learn more about how the routing logic uh, works in this model, um, I would encourage you to watch uh, the, the related video module in, in the entity routing uh, video series. So in this model, I'm also using input parameters to specify the different stochastic processes in my model. So for example, for my passenger inter-arrival time, I'm referring my source object to the inter-arrival times input parameter. Or for the document check station, I'm referring my server object instance to an, an input parameter called doc check processing times. So if I go to the data tab under input parameters, you'll see that I have defined my input parameters here. So for document check processing times, I'm using table value input parameters. And here you can see that um, I'm referring to a table column in a table called doc check observations. So for the document check processing times, I'm directly using observed real world data that I have collected 
from the real system in my simulation model. So if I go to tables, you'll see that I have my doc check observations table here that contains my observations of processing time for 350 passengers that I collected data on. So let's go back to input parameters and talk about the, the other input parameters that we have defined here. So we have uh, another table value input parameter for processing times on, on AIT station. We, we're using a distribution input parameter with a, a family type triangular, minimum, minimum of 5, mode of 10, and maximum of 15 and that's for the pat-down station. For pre-check processing times, I'm using another uh, type of input parameter called expression input parameter. So instead of putting the du expression directly in, in the object instance properties, I, I define the expression here, random.triangular123. And finally, for my inter-arrival times, I'm again using an expression input parameter with uh, an exponential distribution uh, with a mean of 1 over 72. So what is response sensitivity analysis? Suppose that we have L mutually independent input processes and that we have a collection of estimated distributions f hat 1 through f hat L for these uh, distributions. So I represent the estimated distributions as a vector called f hat. And suppose f hat is essentially an estimate of the corresponding unknown true real world vector of distributions called fc, the correct distributions that we do not know but we, we have collected data on. So my correct uh, distribution vector will, will be FC1, FC2, up to FCL. So, in other words, in our airport security checkpoint model, we have five stochastic processes. The arrival process of passengers, document check, AIT, pre-check, and pat-down. So, I represent these by f hat 1, f hat 2, up to f hat 5. So if I, if I go to my simulation model and to my input parameters, you can think of this sampled distribution from the actual observed values for document check processing times as my estimated distribution for this particular stochastic process, which, which I call f hat 2. Similarly, for my inter-arrival times, this exponential distribution with a mean of 1 over 72 is essentially my estimated distribution for the actual underlying passenger inter-arrival time in the real system. So my inter-arrival times uh, distribution is what I call f hat 1. Now I'm going to define the output of interest from each replication j of my simulation model by y sub j. So for example if I'm interested in average time and system from each replication of my simulation I'm going to observe one observation of average time and system. And that's what I call y sub j. And also note that my average time and system depends on my choice of input models, my choice of input parameters. And that is why yj is a function of the set of input parameters or input models that I'm using. Now, we replicate the model n times and we calculate the average and what we obtain is y bar of f hat. So this is essentially the mean 
average time and system over n replications, for example. And note that this y bar is actually an estimate of the true mean for the average time and system, which is what I represent by g of f hat, which is the expected value of average time and system, for example, given my set of estimated distributions. And we know that as we, as we increase the number of replications to infinity, we observe, uh, a, we obtain a better and more accurate estimate of the true population mean. Now, it can be shown that the relationship between the input models, that is my set of f hat distributions, and my simulation output, which is g of f hat, in terms of a linear function of the mean for my estimated distributions and the variance for my estimated distributions. Essentially, this is a meta model for our simulation model. And it provides a regression approximation of the relationship between the inputs in our model and the output in our model. So basically, this is based on the assumption that the sensitivity of the mean simulation output is largely captured by uh, the mean and variance of the individual uh, distributions that we use for our um, input parameters. And of course, again, this is, this is just an approximation. And of course, we can extend this approximation to higher moments, such as skewness and uh, kurtosis and or the percentiles uh, of, 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 of these input distributions. Uh, also note that we, we are not considering the interactions between two or more input variables here. Now, if we further simplify it, this mean variance effects model that I showed in the previous slide and only consider the mean effects, that is the effect of the mean for the estimated distributions and only use these mean values to approximate our simulation output, then we end up with this regression model. Of course, this regression model is not as accurate as, as the case where we also included the variances for these uh, estimated distributions. But the nice thing about this model, or this meta model, I should say, is that we only have one coefficient associated with each estimated distribution, which allows us to easily estimate the sensitivity of our simulation output to each input model f hat. And in fact, the sensitivity analysis that SEMIO performs for us reports these beta L values, these uh, coefficients in the mean effects model that I'm showing here. Now, similar to a statistical regression model, this coefficient beta sub L associated with F hat L approximates the change in your simulation response given a unit positive change in that input parameter f hat l. So, so this expression basically tells you how much your response would change approximately if you increase your input variable by one unit in a positive direction. So the details of how these beta values are estimated and why we can do these approximations in, in a regression meta modeling uh, are out of the scope of this video, but uh, I will provide some additional resources and articles at the end of this video um, if, if you would like to read more about these topics. For now, we're going to trust Simio and his calculations of these sensitivities. Now, let's talk about how we can perform sensitivity analysis in Simio. So the first thing we need to do is define our input parameters, which we've already done in this model. 
The next thing I'm going to do is specify the unit of measurement for each of these input parameters. For instance, for my document check processing times, I'm referring to the values in a table which are actual observations. So I go to that table and I tell Simeo that these values represent time and the units are in minutes. Similarly, for my AIT observations, I tell Simeo that these observations that um, I want you to sample from also represent time and the unit of measurement is minutes. For my pat down processing times, when I specify the parameters of my triangular distribution, I specify that these are all in minutes. Similarly, for my pre-check processing time, I tell Simeo that these are minutes. And finally, for my inter-arrival times, since I'm simply using the inverse of the hourly arrival rate of passengers into the system, my unit will be hours. Once we do this, we need to go to experiments and define a new experiment. And of course, we also need to define some responses for our um, simulation experiments. In this case, I have defined average time and system also in minutes as, as, as a response, also average number and system, as well as the utilization for the different stations as my responses in this set of experiments. I set the number of replications to, to 50, but keep in mind that when you're performing the sensitivity analysis, the number of replications need to be strictly greater than the number of input parameters that you have in your model. In this model, we have five input parameters, so we need to perform at least six replications. And this is to ensure that we have um, enough degrees of freedom to be able to estimate those coefficients in our regression model. Now, all I need to do is to tell Simeo which of these input parameters I want to include in the sensitivity analysis. And by default, all of the input parameters that you de uh, define are included. For the include in response sensitivity analysis property, I have true for all of these input parameters. Again, true for pat down, I have true. Same for AIT and document check. So basically, I'm telling Simeo to include all of these input parameters in the regression model. And the last thing I need to do is simply run the experiment, and Simeo automatically performs the sensitivity analysis in the background. Once my experiment is complete, I simply go to the Input Analysis tab, and Simeo provides a tornado chart that tells me what the sensitivity values or what those beta coefficients uh, are for each of my input parameters. Now in this model, it turns out that the, the output, in this case average time and system, is highly sensitive to processing time on document check. And then the next input parameter is inter-arrival times and then AIT processing times, pre-check processing times, and uh, relatively smaller sensitivity to pad down processing times. I can also hover my mouse on each of these components and see what the sensitivity coefficient or the corresponding beta value is. So for example, in this case for document check processing time, the, the beta coefficient is 64.073. Similarly, for, for inter-arrival time, it's negative 26.15. So, so the magnitude shows how much we expect the selected output, in this case average time and system, to change given one unit positive change in the respective input parameter in the mean for the respective input parameter. The sign, however, tells us whether there is a positive or negative relationship. For this model, 
we expect to see a negative coefficient of sensitivity for inter-arrival times because as, as uh, customers arrive faster, we expect the average time in the system to increase. Also, if we increase the processing time for document check, we expect the average time in the system to increase, which is why we see a positive coefficient. We also need to pay attention to the units. Now, in this case, I know that this value 64.073 tells me that if I increase the mean processing time for document check by one minute, then I expect my average time in system to increase by 64.073 minutes. So, so that's why setting the units of measurement is, is critical in order to be able to uh, properly interpret the results of the sensitivity analysis. Also keep in mind that these sensitivity values are, are simply approximations, as we discussed earlier. So if you actually go back to your model and increase the mean inter-arrival time by one unit or the mean uh, processing time for pre-check by unit, you may not obtain the exact same change in your average time and system. And also note that these are local approximations. Just when you use the derivative of a highly nonlinear function to estimate the function value at points near a reference point, as you go farther from your current values, your approximations, your sensitivity values become less and less accurate. So you can't use these coefficients if you're making huge changes to the current values for your input parameters. These are only for local changes. And finally, keep in mind that we're not looking at multiple input parameters changing at the same time. We keep everything else constant at their current value and only change one of the input parameters by one unit in a positive direction and approximate how that is going to affect our response. And the last thing, I wanted to talk about is alternative visualizations of, of the same information that Simio provides. So if we go to the bar chart, the bar chart basically provides the sensitivity to the input parameters for each response, but what it does, it provides a relative, relative sensitivity. So it normalizes the sensitivity coefficients to 100% and shows the relative importance or sensitivity of each input parameter. The same information is represented differently uh, in the pie chart tab, where instead of bar charts, we see a pie chart for each response, and the different colors represent the different input parameters. So how do we use this information? Basically, this, this sensitivity analysis tells me that if I want to spend more time to estimate my input parameters more accurately, then I need to give more importance to, to the ones that have high coefficients of sensitivity. Because these are the ones that if I estimate incorrectly, or if I do not estimate accurately, are going to have a higher impact on my estimate for my response. So if you would like to read more about sensitivity analysis. I have provided a list of references and additional resources for you to look at. Also note that using input parameters allows us to perform uh, another type of analysis called sample size error analysis, which is a topic for another related video.